Welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. My name's Todd. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If you're coming back, thanks for coming back and checking out our videos. Today, we're gonna to be working on an electric fence for our cows. We have four cows and we have them down in 19 acres of wooded area right now next to the creek. But I wanna move them up into some of this green grass area that we have. So we picked out four acres of pasture land. I'm gonna put up a temporary electric fence around that land. So come along and see how we do it. And if you like this video or if you find it entertaining, please press that like button. It really helps me out a lot and doesn't cost you a thing. And remember to subscribe to keep up to date with all of our videos and press that bell notification to be notified anytime we post a new video. So here I've laid out all of the items I'm going to use to build the electric fence and we'll go through each one of them and talk about them. First we have the wire obviously and this is a 12.5 gauge high tensile steel wire and it's aluminized so uh, that helps prevent it from rusting and I bought three spools of this wire. Each spool is 1,000 feet long and that should be enough to do the uh, four acres that we're going to do. I'm only having to do two sides of that four acre plot. The other sides are already fenced with barbed wire. And then here are the poles. Now I got these poles from a neighbor of mine who raises uh, Angus beef cows and you can see they're pretty beefy fiberglass poles. They're five feet long by seven eighths of an inch in diameter and uh, they're much better than what you would get uh, at Tractor Supply or some of the uh, less sturdy poles. And then he also loaned me this uh, pounder, this pole pounder. This is this bar here. It's um, actually a bar with a big heavy weight uh, welded into the end. It's kind of a homemade deal so you see it's open on this side and uh, it fits over these uh, fiberglass rods and you can pound those into the ground. I have a uh, fence pounder for T-posts but I was told not to use that because it's big enough that uh, your fiberglass rod may slide from one side to the other and then bend it or break it so uh, he loaned me that. And then I have some uh, insulators. I bought these plastic ones initially, and then after talking to my neighbor, he said, you know, don't go with the plastic. Go ahead and get the ceramic insulators. So I bought two boxes of these insulators, uh, and uh, I can take these plastic ones back to Tractor Supply if I need to. And then also these insulators go on your wooden posts. And uh, I have just one area where I've braced a post and it may need one of these to keep the wire off of the post. So I went ahead and bought a bag of those too. And then next I got a ground rod clamp and I also got a ground rod. Here's the, the ground rod. I think this thing's like eight feet long, uh, but you need a lot of rod in the ground to get a proper ground and I bought this clamp actually before I bought my fence energizer which is this uh, Gallagher fence energizer that you see right here and it mounts to the grounding rod so you really don't need uh, that clamp this thing clamps right on and replaces this clamp uh, so I may or may not use that clamp but this is my uh, fence energizer. It's a Gallagher energizer. It says it does up to four miles or 16 acres, but it will also uh, do what we need to do. And then I've got these uh, crimping sleeves. They will be used anytime I need to connect two ends of the wire together. And then my neighbor also loaned me this crimping tool because he said the crimping tools are kind of expensive and for 
what I'm doing and kind of the one-time use, there was no need to buy one. So again, that's that's a great thing about having neighbors, good neighbors that are willing to help you and lend you things so that you don't have to spend a lot of money uh, yourself. Then I got this uh, insulated wire here. And this insulated wire is going to be used to connect each of the four rungs of the fence wire together. And then to connect that to the fence wire, I got um, these lugs here, these line clamps, and they will kind of screw onto the lines and then go between. And then also I got a whole bag full of these tensioners. These uh, things will is what I'm going to use to pull the wire taut once I get everything up and going. So that's kind of it. That's what I've got there to uh, to get the fence uh, up and running. And um, we'll go and get started. One other thing I forgot to mention was this uh, spool of twine here. I'll use that just to pull a straight fence line before I start pounding the posts in and uh, make sure that the posts are in a nice straight line so the fence looks good. Well, here I am pulling the string from uh, my first post all the way down to that end post so that I can get a nice straight line and set my line posts. So now that I've got my string pulled, that uh, will give me a nice straight line in which to drive my line posts. Here I am marking the distance between my line posts. I'm told that uh, 50 feet is a good distance for electric fence. That seems like a lot to me, but I've never built an electric fence before so I'm going to take the advice of my neighbor who does these a lot. You might be asking yourself, why is this guy walking from one end of this fence row to the next? Well, the reason for that is my wife is using the little utility buggy that we have that we use on the farm. She is uh, planting fall flowers. So that's why I'm walking back and forth. Normally, I would have that little buggy and I would uh, have all my stuff loaded on that and just go down the fence line and drop things off. But she has the buggy, so I'm getting my extra steps in today. Now I am walking down the line where I've marked my post locations and just laying out the posts in preparation for coming back and driving them in the ground.
Now I'm going to drive the fence posts in on the locations that I've marked previously. I'm taking a little extra time on this first one because I'm trying to determine how far down to drive the post using this driver in relationship to the measurement on my height stick that I have. Uh, so it's taking me a little longer on this first one, but once I determine how far to go down, then uh, the rest should go quickly. So when I came back to the camera, I noticed it had shut off at some point while I was driving those posts. But uh, we have the poles in now, nice and straight. And uh, what I'm going to do next is go down to the corner and drive the posts across this way to that corner there. So we'll be coming from here, across. Down the line to that corner where that clump of trees are there, and then back down. Okay, so let's run this other side. I'm going to pull the string from here down to that corner post. To start with. Actually, I'll go down there and pull it back this way. Might have noticed on the twine I have this little yellow winder thing that's supposed to help you wind the twine back up once it's finished being used however that thing didn't work at all it still tangled up and just created a big mess so that was a waste of money boy let me tell you today has been one of those days filming first I filmed the intro to this video about the electric fence. And then I filmed a uh, detail of the different items that I would use for the fence. Then I came out to the fence line and started filming, putting in the posts and doing some other things. And while doing that, I always check my video, make sure it's running and just check it out. And when I did, I noticed that it had no sound. So I couldn't understand why it had no sound. I use a clip on microphone most of the time and I'm not using it right now because for some reason, the input jack on my phone, which I use to do all the filming, 
is not working for the microphone now. So all of the footage that I did, the intro, the talking about the items, describing what I was going to do, and doing a lot of the video has no sound. So, uh, and then I came down here and started to run this and came back and my phone had run out of memory. And so I thought, well, no, no big deal. I'll just move what's on my phone internal memory to the SD card that I have, which I always have in the phone. So I tried to do that. What do you think? The SD card is not in my phone. So I had to leave here, go back up to the house and move that. So for those of you who think this YouTubing is easy, uh, it's not sometimes. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love doing this. I love producing videos for you guys. But sometimes, man, it can be a pain in the rear and it slows you down. I could have probably been done with this by now if I hadn't have worried about the video and running out of things and why the video wasn't working. But hey, that's uh, that's the life of a content creator, as my wife says. She reminds me, hey, you, nobody, nobody makes you do this. You do it uh, on your own. And I do, and I really enjoy it. But I just wanted to give you guys a little vent or a rant on uh, how things can go wrong sometimes when you're trying to produce a video. So now I'm going to measure this line. I think it's about 200 feet. I'm going to measure it though and then divide up uh, see how many poles I need. If I grew rocks, I would be a millionaire. So here I am with the pole, and I'm wearing gloves because these fiberglass poles, you don't want to get the fiberglass uh, in your hands. They have uh, holes drilled in them, and on the back side, I'm not sure if you can see this, let me get up close. On the back side, uh, where they drill the hole through there's little shards of fiberglass that stick out there The front is nice and smooth but the back side so you don't want those getting in your hands and uh, Oh man, I picked that up now. I don't know where my uh, Where my mark is. Let me measure off again Okay 35 right there and I was right on it Okay take my post put it right here at my wire where my string is take this beast Ooh, lean it over get it in there. Yeah, gotta straighten it up now I just eyeball it straightened so listen <laughs> I'm not as anal to go get a level and level these things up or plumb them up but I do like to, for it to be straight. And then I put my uh, stick here. And just start driving it down. There you go. So the weld right there. So pull it off. There you go. Right at the top. how's that look that's all we have time for today in the next video I'm going to attach the insulators to the 
beginning and end posts and to the corner post. So join us for the next video. Until then, thanks for watching.